and uh, we whistle our way through this day. All right, we whistle our way through. You know, joy, joy comes from within you. It is you to give yourself the joy and the peace and the love that you want to get. Just whistle your way through your morning as you tune in and watch the Y in the Morning show right here on Y254. For those who are joining us, this is Y in the Morning. My name is Ram Magogo. Thank you very much for keeping uh, us company from the time we started till now. I'm seeing so many tweets, so many comments on our Facebook platform, Y254, and on our Twitter platform from at Y254 channel. The hashtag is Y in the morning for those who have not, uh, you know, sent in their comments and their thoughts on the different stories that uh, have made headlines this morning. Remember, we have the death uh, of the former governor, for former senator of Garissa, that is Yusuf Haji. Uh, so many people are sending in their comments in regards to that. So make sure that you, you, you tell us your thoughts about what you think about Haji the man himself. Okay, now we put a question online on our Facebook page. It says, who are the best and the worst people to have around at your workplaces? I'm seeing so many people are already giving in their comments. Head over to Facebook, Y254, and drop in your thoughts. We shall sample them up later on during the career discussion segment uh, with Sarah Mooney. Who are the best and worst people to have around a workplace? So many comments there. We shall sample them up later on. Head over to our Facebook page, Y254. Drop in your thoughts in regards to that as we shall discuss career. But before that... This morning, let's talk about politics, youth and politics. What has taken center stage in the political arena? I am joined by Daniel Orogo, political analyst, and uh, Christine Kendi in the, uh, at the center, who is also a political analyst. Karibu sana, Chris, uh, Kendi, and uh, Dan. Thank you very much. Uh, let's, before we touch on, the, uh, what, uh, on politics, let's talk about Governor and uh, Senator Yusuf Haji. Not the late. He passed on this morning, uh, quite sad indeed, after a long illness. Uh, Christine, what, do you, what are your thoughts in regards to you know, uh, the former senator of uh, Garissa? It's really sad. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he passed on when something that he had just started, the BBI, mm -hmm. which he was chairing, mm -hmm. is on the way to taking off. Mm -hmm. So it's really sad. I think he would have wanted to see BBI being implemented. Mm -hmm. And I hope we should we shall implement or in his memory mm -hmm. and i hope we shall implement in his memory if 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 if, if you look at um, you know the footsteps that uh, he has left done uh, what do you remember the former senator for well i, I think uh, first of all is just to also uh, convey my heartfelt condolences to the family mm -hmm. friends and relatives and the people of garissa uh, uh, for losing a public servant, a esteemed public servant who is well renowned for his role, you know, um, in public service. Mm -hmm. um, we vividly remember uh, the late senator for a number of reasons. One is his role in, uh, you know, peace processes in northeastern Kenya. Yeah, the Al Shabab um, issue. Uh, the Al Shabab issue mm -hmm. when the nation, you know, was. Um, in a state of confusion, in a state of panic uh, as a result of the insurgency. Um, uh, Senator, by then, I think defense minister, you remember, mm. he stood up to his ground and, you know, never shielded uh, the sympathizers of, uh, you know, Al-Shabaab militants. And as a result of that, I think his, uh, his purpose in duty and his honesty um, in public service, you know, help the country to deal with the insurgency uh, that was raising havoc in northeastern Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the issues that we also um, remember uh, uh, the late is, of course, what uh, my colleague just talked about. Mm -hmm. Is uh, he didn't stop at you know uh, his uh, backyard only, but of course he served and uh, make sure that these peace processes are enrolled throughout the country. Mm -hmm. um, as a public servant who served different regimes, I think it bequeaths him to understand that uh, the, the, the Building Bridges Initiative was well needed in this country. I think to his own understanding, 
from his own experience. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he never shied away from even dutifully serving as the co-chair of the Building Bridges Initiative. All right. mm -hmm. So we pass uh, the condolences message, and I think Kenyans have lost, um, you know, a personality and has lost, you know, um, a figure that we will well miss throughout, you know, and his story needs to be told mm -hmm. to the generations to come. Speaking of generations to come, um, you know, Yusuf Haji is uh, one man who has left um, quite a legacy. I'm looking at, uh, well, still on what he has said, uh, he has left eight children, and here we're talking about the DPP, Nurdin Haji, and Abdul Haji, who is, uh, who is uh, you know, uh, amongst many others, uh, at the time of his passing, a person who is 80 years. Look, look, looking at, you know, he has left leaders in uh, the, uh, the country. What do you think about, you know, the, the legacy that he's leaving behind, those that he has helped raise, those that he has also put, you know, uh, or helped put on the limelight to become uh, leaders in the country that are changing the nation? Christine, Kendi. Mm, his shoes are big to fill. They will be very difficult to very. fill. But he's done one thing most leaders don't do, and mm. it is the one thing that defines leadership, that is bringing other people up, that when you're gone, there will, there will, you will not leave a vacuum. We can, even from, the fam, from his family alone, we can see that he has left leaders in the country. Mm -hmm. He raised leaders, which is not easy to, to do. And he's not a p person who only shined in the public, but a person who also shined in his family. You, you know that bringing up a family of people like you know, the DPP, the likes of DPP, yes. I mean, people with integrity mm -hmm. is not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. So we shall miss him. Mm -hmm. And we hope that the vacuum, the vacuum will be impossible to fill, mm -hmm. but we hope that it can be filled. You, 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 you talked about the legacy. The thoughts on that, the legacy that he's leaving behind. Mm. Mm. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, it's, it's, uh, it's so progressive because uh, um, as, as, as a family man and, uh, you know, as a leader, mm. the intricate balance between being a servant leader in making sure that you, you know, leave the footprints, mm -hmm. um, well, well established footprints in both a family, in both community, and uh, in a country at large. That what's really always become very difficult in in, in leaders. Um, one of the issues that we really understand is that what can we glean on, you know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. as a generation of young people who would want to ascend into leadership position, um, mine as character, mine as value, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, uh, mine as a well, you know, um, read and in terms of arming ourselves with history and content. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the issues that I would urge is, um, you know, the footprints uh, the late senator has led behind, and you know the legendary legacy that he has laid down. It bequeaths a generation of ours mm -hmm. to first of all do not really be reactive about his, but also to be proactive by reading, mm -hmm. by assimilation. And by understanding that, you know, um, this was a man of the soil mm -hmm. who toiled so much to ensure that um, he has a well-balanced family, mm -hmm. that he has a well, you know, a peaceful society mm -hmm. in his neighborhood, but also extended his service beyond the borders of his origins and served as a country at large. Um, and like my colleague mentioned, the only reward of which, you know, um, the proponents of Building Bridges Initiative would give it to him is to make sure that what he stood for, uh, to see a country that is moving from blood ties to a country mm -hmm. of ideals, realized, you know, and that is the Building Bridges Initiative that we yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there are lessons that the, especially the youths can pick from such a leader. 
uh, like this, uh, the, uh, Senator Yusuf Haji. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Uh, someone who served as the chair of the Building Bridges Initiative Task Force after being appointed by the president himself, leaving a big legacy. His shoes we may not fit, nor may fit into uh, the shoes that he has uh, left. But regardless, we need to pick leadership qualities from him and replicate on ourselves. We should learn from our elders, like the, uh, like Mze Yusuf Haji. May he rest in peace. Now, uh, let's move on to the next story of the day. And uh, this is in, in, in regards to Jubilee Party. We have, um, we, we, we've seen what happened in the past one week, a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I realize a week is a long time, especially in politics. Mm -hmm. One week is a very long time, even a day. Now, um, let me let me start with you, Christine. Uh, this 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 wrong these wrangles that are taking place within a jubilee party, the rifts. Do, 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 do you see this rift growing even further? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a shame mm. <laughs> that all this is happening in jubilee, and instead of jubilee taking responsibility, they are blaming other parties. And in every party, there are, party uh, there are conflict resol resolving mechanisms, which the, do we call them the oppositions in Jubilee, or the, they, they have already taken over to become the official opposition? No, in the no they have the National Management Committee that talks about it. They, they also have the Party Disciplinary Committee. Yes, there are so many uh, con conflict resolution mechanisms in yes, the party. Within the, within the, the, within the, the party, party yeah. where people can sit down and resolve all the issues. But it's because no one wants to resolve the issues. People want to leave the party, but they do not want to leave. They still want to have their cake and eat it. You want to be in opposition, but still enjoy the perks of the being in the, in the, in the ruling party. Mm -hmm. So you know when you leave uh, all the parks, you, you, lose the, you lose out on the parks of the ruling party. And um, in as much as they keep blaming the uh, former PM, Raila Odinga, mm -hmm. we have to know that Raila Odinga is not in government. Raila Odinga is not the deputy president of, the, of this republic. He is an opposition leader who sat with the president to resolve for the, for the sake of peace in this country. Dispute resolution. Yes. And the Political Parties Act allows it. It allows for the opposition and the ruling party for the sake of the country because the country is bigger than any other person. Um, and I'll, then, sorry, let me, uh, uh, and then the people who've been, who've been suspended or expelled, they uh, haven't been expelled already. It's, it's a shame, Ram. When you are a nominated member of parliament, you have never represented the group that you nominate. Mm. Let's start with Isaac Maura, for example. Mm. He represents the disabled. I would have expected as, there's a day I was near Kencom, mm. and I was watching a guy on a wheelchair being carried into the bus. That is because we don't even have ramps on our buses. What was Isaac Maura doing in parliament? Who was he representing in parliament? Mm. When in a country like Kenya, in 2021, a disabled person has to be carried by a conductor and passengers for him to get into a bus. And his wheelchair um, folded up and put in, his, in the car. What happens during the rush hour when everyone, when it's a kilamton ajitegemea? What happens to this person on a wheelchair? He cannot get into that bus. What happens when the conductor is a rude person who doesn't care about this person? It does not happen. When we have traffic lights that don't even, you know, they're supposed to be vocal with, the, oh, with an audio, something audio where when the light turns green, it mm. says the light has turned green mm. for the sake of the, of the deaf. What has Isaac Maura been doing in Parliament, claiming that he was representing the disabled? Even if it wasn't for the party su suspensions, I think the disabled should have come up and, and challenged for his suspension because that person has never represented them. We have pe people like Millicent Omanga representing women. I am a woman. I would have, this is a time you when don't we, feel like she represented you in Parliament. She did not represent me. This is a time when we had a woman give birth in Pangani Hospital, outside the hospital. And the best those women could do is carry basins and sanitary towels to the hospital as if the woman had been denied entry because she did not have sanitary towels. So, in other words, Kendi, what you're saying is that this 
senators uh, or members of parliament that uh, are uh, going to uh, th that are a uh, that have either faced the acts or they deserved it or you're saying they deserved it they deserved it they never you know but you, you, you are you, you're nominated. bringing the whole the whole blame on that particular individual yet they have participated in parliament now let me tell you the, this is a political party you are nominated at a pol by a political party it wasn't a wedding you were going to attend you know when you are nominated you represent two things the people you are nominated to represent mm. because you do not have a constituency and the party so when you go in parliament, you are supposed to vote according to the party lines. Any other, any other domestics you have with the party, you resolve them during a party meeting, in an internal party meeting, <laughs> using the internal party conflict resolution mechanisms. Do, do you agree that they deserve whatever they are going through? Dan, and that they have failed those who they represent in parliament? Well, I think, uh, first of all, um, our constitution envisions um, institutions of political party to be institutionalized in terms of you know democracy within mm. that any representative would be in a position as they represent the people that they elected or people that nominated them there should be some leeway of expressing a decent view within that would build a political party. Let me begin from there. Uh, I also admit that uh, the Political Parties Act also restricts the nominated you know, representative within any political party within mm -hmm. the time that they serve. Mm -hmm in those political parties not to advance ideologies of, of another a party, party mm -hmm. that they represent. And to that effect, the Jubilee Party was right to you know, uh, take legal actions. I call them legal action uh, because that then violates the constitution of Kenya. That is an upfront to the Political Parties Act. Mm. Politically, the actions might not be popular, and I'm holding that view for a number of times. It might be legal advancement, but not politically you know, uh, correct. When you look at the performance of Jubilee Party as a governing party, beginning with the structure of leadership of Jubilee Party, mm. it is a failed political party from the beginning because this is a governing party that seed power with a well-crafted contract between the citizens of Kenya and the political party who is in a position to govern. I would refer you, and is in the public domain, the party leader 